good. So it's almost, if I understand you correctly, they're bringing w whatever skills they have acquired before, and in addition to that, they're bringing yeah. the other stuff like compassion, resilience. Yeah. And so that's good for them. And is that good for other team members? Is that something that they can impart if they're listened to? I guess. Uh, yes. I mean, I, I, well, I think it it can be. I mean, everyone's different. I mean, you know, some of the most irritating people I know have had experience of mental illness. I mean, it's not because they've got mental illness. They're just irritating people. So it doesn't turn you into a saint. Right. You, do, you do learn life skills through having difficult experiences and recovering from them. I mean, it could be an experience of, you know, being made redundant from a big job or, or, losing, your, or losing your loved one. Or you know, going through a socially shaming experience, or having another kind of you know, or surviving cancer or something like that. These experiences shape us, and um, and they can always they can they can uh, enable us to uh, develop ourselves um, in in the ways that I expressed uh, in particular, uh, and to bring that into the workplace. And if we bring it into the workplace, we benefit the customers. We benefit. The, our work colleagues, and we benefit the organisation. Great. And how? What would you say to um, managers, for example? Because um, one of the fears that um, managers usually bring to the to training is they ask me, Pedro, um, how how do we manage people with a mental health issue? Because we're having lots of problems that are coming up for for people with mental health issues yeah, in the workplace. Yeah. What would you say to somebody? If they ask you that question. Um, there's a kind of a fear of, oh, you know, they've got a mental health problem. I've got to, uh, you know, I don't know what to say to them or I don't, I don't know how to approach them. Look, you manage, how, how do these people manage people who are in the throes of grief or who are really angry because their wife kicked them out or who are um, who are really sad because they've had a terrible, you know, illness diagnosis? Um, I don't think the rules are very different for people who have experience of mental health problems or who are going through difficulties at the time. And I think one of the great problems is that what we've tended to do with, a, with extreme human conditions in the last 200 years is the community said, oh, look, We'll, we'll create a bunch of professionals to look after those people and we'll put them in institutions so that we don't have to deal with them. And so I think that often people who are employers uh, get people with, say, mental health problems in the workplace and they, and they kind of feel, well, oh, I, I need an expert to deal with, with someone because they've got a label. They might have bipolar or schizophrenia or some sort of label. And they feel very underconfident about dealing with them. Look, um, I, my advice is to deal with people the same way you deal with any other employers, employees who are in trouble. Right. And don't be scared. Okay. So what kind of, um, do you need, think is there flexible support are needed for people with a mental health problem? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes there are, look, this flexible support needed for mothers who have to pick up their children at three o'clock. Everyone who comes into the workforce uh, may need flexible support. Um, now, someone who experiences mental health problems um, while they're on the job uh, may need them as w flexible support as well. But I remember once listening to this brilliant talk by a woman in a, in a wheelchair, and she said, look, when I go to work, nobody has to provide me with a chair because I bring my own. And if you're blind, nobody has to nobody has to provide me with lights because I can't see anyway. And and so let's stop thinking about these flexible supports as something special that people with you know a label of mental illness need. There are times in our lives uh, as as workers when we all need flexible supports. Um, it may be that we've got, um, you know, we've got a, we've got a, a niggling, ongoing physical complaint. It may be that we've got a dependent child at home who's sick. It may be that we have uh, some episodes of mental health problems. 
Uh, there may be a, a whole bunch of reasons for it. And we need to normalise the fact that sometimes people with mental health problems do need flexible supports um, and just think, well, this is just something that employers need to have flexibility about for their whole workforce. Right. So you have a very normalising approach and uh, in insight into mental health at work. Yeah, I, I think the more kind of normalising, the, no, the more we normalise it, the more relaxed everyone will be about it. Because, um, you know, and, and the more we sort of think of people with mental illness in the workplace as a special category, the, the more problems we're going to create. Now, I don't mean to say that there are some particular supports that people with mental health problems may need more than other people in the workplace. I mean, one is if you're on a bunch of medication, you might, and they, they make you dopey in the morning, you might want to start work later. Some people who hear voices um, find extraneous noise really difficult, so they might want to have a quiet workspace. Sometimes people need flexible sick leave because, you know, they might have, uh, they might have periods where they have to be off work. Uh, or they might want to deal where they roll in some of their other leave into their sick leave or, or something like that. So, yes, there are some accommodations. It's just like the parent who has to pick up their child at, who doesn't have any childcare after school. The typical accommodation would be, well, I need to leave school at uh, half past two in the afternoon. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, in your opinion, because you've been dealing with this for 30, for 30 years, you've been working for 30 years yeah. and highly productive, I would say, um, uh, what are the coping strategies that a person with mental health issues could could uh, tap into in order to make their work experience better? So, really, I can only talk from my own experience there because yeah. I think I think it is different for different people. What strategies have I? Um, well, you know, for one strategy I've had is uh, I don't want to work for a boss because I don't do very well being told what to do. So I've decided to be self-employed and I've just traded income anxiety for office politics. But that, that's okay. So, But that, again, that's really got nothing to do with the fact that I had a, a mental health problem. That's just because of my personality. So, so um, but I think there is, um, with all human beings, uh, maybe a bit more so with people who've, had mental health problems, we have to watch out for stress. So how do how do we how do we watch out for stress? Well, we recognise signs that we're getting into stress. Um, we ease back when we're getting really tired or scratchy or kind of uh, anxious. Um, uh, we might tell our employer that, um, oh look, this is all getting a bit much for me. I just need to slow down a bit. So it's it's having the um in the workplace it's about having the the ability not only to say to yourself what I need but to be able to say that to your employer I think is very important and the whole issue of disclosure in the workplace is quite a big thing for people who have been labeled with mental health problems uh because they're worried about discrimination yeah. That's a question so, that comes up in training a lot too. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think there's a lot, uh, there's a lot we can do. Um, we and and you know, that whole experience of going through um, episodes of mental distress does teach you a lot about well, what can I deal with in life and what can't I? So even by the time people have come to the workplace, they've probably got a pretty good idea of what you know, what they can take and what they can't take um, and uh, probably a better idea than a lot of other workers. 